It is now our honor to introduce the Dean of Harvard Medical School, Dr. George Daly. After earning his bachelor's degree magna cum laude from Harvard in 1982, Daly went on to earn his PhD in biology at MIT. He received his MD from HMS, graduating in 1991 with the rare distinction of summa cum laude, an honor HMS has awarded only 21 times in the school's history. He then pursued clinical training in internal medicine at Mass General and was a clinical fellow at Brigham and Women's and Boston Children's Hospital. After an active clinical practice in hematology and oncology at Mass General Hospital and Boston Children's, he assumed his administrative role as director of the pediatric stem cell transplantation program at Boston Children's and Dana-Farber, a post he held until assuming his current position as dean of the faculty of medicine. Dean Daly has served as a member of the HMS faculty since 1995, and in 2010, he became a full professor at HMS. Dean Daly's research focuses on the mechanisms that underlie blood disorders and cancer. His work has provided critical target validation for the development of Gleevec, a highly effective cancer therapy. It is our distinct privilege to welcome Dean Daly to the podium. Well, thank you, Raquel, Sophia, and Tommy, and, and to all the phenomenal speakers. Wow, what, what an afternoon. Um, I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Uh, class day is always a momentous occasion, but the fact that we can finally gather in person after two very long years makes this an especially joyous day. Now, because of the pandemic, you all have had to persevere in your training during a time that has been deeply fraught for the world and for the medical profession. But the pandemic has also awakened you to the central importance of the social determinants of health. You've given your all in fighting COVID-19, in clinics, in community health centers, in the laboratories. You've countered misinformation. You've advocated for vaccine equity. You've equipped yourself with scientific knowledge and you have excelled in your studies. You've been at times fearful, hopeful, dismayed, exhausted, adamant, and triumphant. Now, despite the emotional turmoil of the past few years, you've advocated for each other and for your patients. You've advocated that compassionate healthcare and the fruits of modern science, innovative vaccines and medicines should be accessible to everyone. Well, as Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and on behalf of all 12,000 Harvard Medical School faculty, I want you to know how enormously proud we all are of you. Now, the pandemic has taught us painful and inconvenient truths about the U.S. healthcare system. Despite prodigious advances in biotechnology, drug and vaccine development, adequate healthcare has remained inaccessible for many in our own rich country. Your careers, your futures can change that narrative. You will be instrumental in determining the future trajectory of human health and well-being. And that is both a responsibility and an opportunity. If you are ambivalent or nervous about what lies ahead, well, I, I don't blame you. If you are tired or disillusioned from the burdens of the last several years, I understand. But I encourage you to reflect on the last two years of the pandemic. Reflect on your interactions with your teachers and with your peers. Think about the conversations you've had, the ideas that you've workshopped together. Think about all that you have learned. You don't leave Harvard Medical School with just a medical education. You leave Harvard Medical School with a powerful network of peers, colleagues, and mentors. You leave here with a common purpose, a common purpose to make the world healthier, more truthful, 
more peaceful, and more just. Now, there is no singular hero in Harvard Medical School's mission to alleviate suffering and to improve health and well-being for all. Ours is a collective effort, and I would wager that given everything you and your classmates have endured, your resilience and determination will make you a formidable force for medical justice, a formidable force for social justice in the decades to come. Now, sadly, this past winter, we lost one of the world's greatest crusaders for social justice and health equity when our dear colleague Paul Farmer died suddenly while rounding and teaching at the Butaro Hospital of the University of Global Health Equity in Rwanda. Paul was one of the greatest humanitarians of not just our time, but of all time. His life's work was an inspiration, a constant reminder that the no most noble calling of a physician is to serve those in need. Now, if Paul were here with us today, he would look upon all of your brilliant faces and he would say and quip, you are my retirement plan. You will keep my dreams alive. So as you commence your careers, you have big questions to contemplate and address. What is my role in making healthcare more equitable? How can I be an ambassador for social change? I trust and in fact I know that you will seek and you will find answers to those questions. Indeed, you are already changing medicine. You have committed to new visions for global health through endeavors like the Marayundu Initiative in Rwanda. You have advocated for the transformation of medical education around trauma-informed care. And you helped launch curriculum reform to ensure that students and our faculty clinicians become exceptionally well-equipped to provide high-quality, holistic health care for sexual and gender minority patients of all ages. Your list of accomplishments is already long. Your careers and your collaborations you forge with others will define what it means to follow Paul Farmer's vision for health equity and the vision for humanitarianism in the 21st century. Now, it's becoming abundantly clear that the world needs you to chart this path. Physicians, by providing compassionate care to the vulnerable and ill, earn a privileged position of trust from their patients and still enjoy favorable reputations and trust in the general public. Now, at a time when misinformation and outright fabrication sullies far too much of our public discourse, medicine and health remains a domain where the vast majority still respect truth and expertise because lives depend on it. As medical practitioners, scientists, innovators, and leaders, you will be called upon to uphold the importance of honesty and evidence-based decision-making in your work and in society. The senseless, purposeless war in Ukraine reminds us that physicians and other health workers play a critical role in the promotion of peace. Medical practitioners, public health researchers track early warning signs of violence and unrest. They construct models of its outbreak and they lobby for methods of addressing the structural roots of conflict. And in the midst of war, healthcare workers selflessly care for others at great personal risk and stand as heroes amidst the chaos and strife. Let us acknowledge and be grateful for the humanitarian efforts of so many in the Harvard Medical School community who are working in Ukraine and around the world. Now the Please. The existential threats of war, climate change, 
the senseless acts of gun violence in our communities, they've created a pandemic of their own, a pandemic of stress and anxiety. Shockingly, according to the American Psychological Association, as many as 70% of US primary care visits are driven by mental health issues, and that was true even before the pandemic. Currently, more than 40% of Americans are reporting symptoms of anxiety or depression, and wait lists for appointments with therapists can be six months or longer. A nationwide survey by the National Alliance on Mental Illness found that 33% of participants could not find a health care provider who would accept their insurance. And for black and brown youth in particular, it's been particularly difficult to find behavioral self health support. The spectrum of need runs from our youth to our seniors. Long-term care for the growing population of the elderly is fragmented and unsustainable. We need solutions that can bolster nursing homes effectiveness, solutions that can make at-home health care efficient, affordable, so that individuals can age more comfortably. Now, these are just a few examples of the many challenges that you will face in your careers. And these may seem like daunting challenges. But as I look out at the graduates, as I look out this afternoon, I see all of you and I feel confident that the future is in good hands. Our society desperately needs energetic, passionate minds like yours to couple scientific rigor with compassion, to wield clinical expertise to advance health equity and justice. We need you, the next generation, to be evangelists for truth and for peace. So on behalf of the faculty of Harvard Medical School, it is a tremendous honor to call you our colleagues to welcome you into the age-old and time-honored noble medical profession. And on behalf of your teachers, your mentors, and the alumni community that you now join, I express my hopeful and happy congratulations. You are you are a remarkable class. You are a remarkable class, and it will be awe-inspiring to see what you all do next. So congratulations on this momentous milestone in your lives. And now, with great excitement, let me invite Dean for Medical Education Ed Hundert and Dean for Students Fidencio Saldana to join me for the conferring of the MD degrees.